Your hair is perfect. So it's time to uh, it's time to start cutting on the uh, actual housing itself. Um, double check the instructions. Yes, it is in fact two inches. Uh, and I got a silver sharpie, and I actually cut this little piece of cardboard uh, two inches so that it was easy to just kind of follow along with the marker and give myself about two inches. Um, it doesn't have to be 100% precise. Um, you know, we're not sending this to the moon or anything, but, uh, um, but yeah, so I've got my, I've got my mark on here and, you know, it's all the way around so that I can, uh, I can just go ahead and cut. And my plan is to, um, start cutting some of these sections and also do some, some slices here so that I can take it off in pieces. Um, I'm going to have to cut it at least in two spots to get it to come off the uh, axle tube. Um, and hopefully I don't get too much into the tube, but every time I've done this I've got into the tube a little bit. Um, but yeah, we'll uh, start up the cut. Do we want to put a cover on this to help keep crud out of the interior? Well, we could. Um, the thing is, uh, we're going to come in and hose this thing out and fully clean it anyway, but yeah, having having a little less dust in there is probably a good idea. So let's grab the uh, differential cover and throw it on. Okay. On the whole thing. Yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll get run at 4x with some you know heavy metal music behind or something. balances if you set it right. Which of course means I'll knock it over. Once we get the first one out. Yeah. Once the first section comes out, everything else should go a lot easier. Should.
Moving. Is it? Moving. Yes, it is. I can see it now. Yay! Huzzah! Yeah, and if you get in here, you can see where well, we didn't quite get the cut all the way in, and it actually cracked yep, free. Just, just, just crack it free, which is exactly what you want to do. And yeah, you can see I did get into the tube a little bit, which is inevitable when you're doing this. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll weld a little bead on there and restore the integrity of that. But yeah. And which direction do you want to go? I don't know. I might need to figure out what tool to get best through this thickest part. Need a new one. be best for this side okay. and then actually we're getting there we're getting to the other spring pad and so yeah getting the round disc all the way through down here down to the to the meat um, it's kind of hard to see but you can still see there's a little bit left to get through and the blade is just not big enough oh. <laughs> so problem is this cut came in at a little bit of an angle and so getting through is going to be maybe a challenge. You can oh. rotate that up a little bit. Or you can put it right back where it was. Okay. Longer blade might make this a little easier. Well. Sawzall, and it's mostly coming free here. Um, let's flip it around and see. Let's see what else I can crack. Okay. So the whole top part is free. Oh, and you can, if you look real close, you can see the crack forming in the uh, what's remaining. This side. And now Bingo. the whole thing. And the whole thing is loose. So we can set it up there. And yeah, so. Now obviously it's not gonna come off because it's more than half the distance, but. 
So now what I can do is I can make this cut without getting into the housing. And I can do it on the thin cut. I did end up getting in the tube a little bit. Done. So now we just come back, yeah. weld that up, and then do a Holy little bit crap, of polishing. I, I really did get into that. Yep. But yeah, that's that's just a weld bead. I'll fix that and polish it down. And then we're going to come through, especially because you can tell I got into the housing just a little bit on a couple of these spots. We're going to weld a, a bead around the uh, perimeter here just to strengthen this up a little. So we've got everything prepped. Uh, we came in uh, with the welder here and uh, we laid a bead down on uh, all of the gouges that we that I made in the tube. Uh, we are going to come in and preheat this this cast section and, and lay a bead uh, right at the junction of the tube. But yeah, so uh, just just laying a bead down and then we're going to get out the grinder and polish it smooth. Well, we're done uh, cleaning up the axle housing. Uh, you can see we've polished up the, uh, the tubes, uh, gotten all the rust and old paint and everything off so that it was a good surface to weld against. Um, these silver lines are kind of our boundaries for where we are going to be uh, grinding off uh, this uh, for welding. Uh, but then you also see these black marks here. Um, and we're actually going to do a step uh, related to the uh, locker installation before we weld the truss on because we're going to have to come in and drill this. Um, and it's going to be easier to drill and tap this before we put the truss in the way. And um, we've been, we figured out on the inside of the, uh, the housing um, it's got a, a thick rib here, and it's actually upside down, but it says rib. Um, and then we have a couple of bosses for the uh, differential cover bolts uh, that get in the way. But we need a uh, we need, we needed to find a thin spot, and that's where this X is, that we can drill through um, to have the air line for the locker. Or if you're using an e-locker, uh, an electrical wire would come out here. Uh, and this would be a good spot. And if you come around, you can see inside here, here's this, this lip. Uh, and then the bosses for the, uh, the, for the cover bolts. And we're going to come in uh, just under here. So we've got the hole drilled. Uh, drilled it out to 7 eighths, or 7 eighths, 7 sixteenths. Uh, and then use the uh, quarter inch NPT tap that they tell us to use. Uh, we've got a pipe plug in here so that when we weld we don't get gunk in there. Um, and you'll see that the top of the truss is going to block that. And you'll also notice that we have our nice little mark here where we're going to clearance this cap to make sure that uh, we can get access to the uh, airline. And a couple of minutes with a grinder. Uh, I didn't quite get to my mark, but you know, looking at it, it looks like it's going to be just fine access so we can get at the uh, at the earplug and looks like we've got just about perfect to be at the top of the actual uh, structure for the truss there as well yeah not have that be on the other side of the oh yeah we didn't dig too far in before we got to the uh, to that piece yep yep so mock up lots of little 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 test little test little test yeah uh, we're still gonna so we've been having a little issue with the bracket on this side not sitting square and so we're going to have to do a little grinding and maneuvering. Well, we are uh, in the process here of uh, welding up the truss. Uh, we started out, we put these base pieces, these are the foundation on which everything else keys. Uh, we got these in place, we got them tacked to each other on the axle and then we're bringing them out here. We brought it out here to the welding table because it's a little easier to weld. Um, and we're going to weld, fully weld this before we put it back on the axle and uh, put it in. And 
if you read the instructions for the uh, truss kit, they recommend that you weld, tack weld everything to the axle and then get everything fitted. Um, I find it works a little better to get this foundation fully done and, and built before you put it on the axle and then weld everything to it. Um, so uh, that's, that's what we're doing. And one of the one of the things in the instructions we are doing, we're doing short stitch welds. Um, it's supposed to be an inch long. I'm probably doing it two or three inches at a time. But uh, if you spread the the heat around and let it cool as you go, it uh, keeps it from warping too much. Um, 